There seems to be a strong allergy sweeping across the country. Now, this allergy, it doesn't affect all of us. It only affects maybe 10% of the population. Us normal people, we find it to be incredibly satisfying. Matter of fact, most normal people today are actively yearning for it. They actively seek it out because it's difficult to find, especially in the mainstream media. I'm talking about the truth. You remember how afraid members of Woke United Methodists pretended to be of the COVID? You guys remember that? I can remember Chris Cuomo. Hey, it's me, Chrissy C. I vividly remember Chris Cuomo breaking down in tears live on CNN as he shared the traumatic story of spending a week with the Fauci. The wanker spankers fear of the COVID. It does not come close to how much they fear the truth. When you're fighting an agenda built on an illusion, when you're fighting an agenda built on lies, the most powerful tool you have at your disposal is the truth. During the week leading up to the Super Bowl, Deion Sanders was speaking the truth. Now, for some reason, it took a couple of weeks for recipients of woke welfare to react to this. Deion Sanders was speaking so much truth, Woke Memorial Hospital was running at 100% capacity. But they finally awoke from their coma, or woke from their coma. And they are once again trying to destroy Deion Sanders. When you're running an organization, a business, the hiring process can vary depending on the job you're trying to fill. For example, if you're looking for a CEO, someone to lead the company, you're going to extensively research potential candidates, extensive background checks. You want to know of any criminal history. You want to know about their family dynamic, work history. You need to know everything, everything about the person you're going to hire. Not only because you're paying them a hefty salary, it's mainly because this person will be responsible for leading hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. The success of the company will depend on the decisions they make. Now, the process is completely different when hiring the janitor. Do they have hands and feet? Check. Do they know how to properly use a broom? Check. They're hired. You're not wasting your time and resources looking into their character, looking into their background. Damn near anyone is qualified to be a janitor. Except, of course, a graduate of Woke U. Someone like Joy Reid would not be qualified to be a janitor. Instead of using the broom to sweep the floor, Joy Reid uses a broom as her preferred method of transportation. The process businesses use to fill jobs, it's similar to the process NFL teams, or in this case, college football teams, use to fill positions. Certain positions have higher expectations, higher qualifications than other positions. When you're looking for a running back, you're not overly concerned with his mental capabilities. Is he fast? Can he protect the ball? Can he block? That's about the only qualifications you need. Running backs are a dime a dozen. The vast majority of them are replaceable. But when you're looking to fill the quarterback position, the process completely different. You are looking for a leader, someone with natural charisma. You need someone with intelligence, works well under pressure, has the ability to make good decisions in under a second. When you're recruiting a quarterback at the college level, you want to know his family dynamic. Was he raised by good parents? Does this kid have good character? Are the parents involved? Are they invested in his future? Now, much more goes into it, but you get the point. During the week of the Super Butt Bongo Bowl, Deion Sanders explained this point to Rich Eisen and his audience. Now, this is not nuclear physics. It's not difficult to understand, but leave it to the shit fucks to spin this into a case of mythical racism. Watch for yourself. Quarterbacks are different. Yeah. We want mother, father, you know, dual parent. Mm -hmm. We want that kid to be three, five and up because he's got to be smart. Mm -hmm. Um, Not bad decisions off the field. Uh, at all Mm -hmm. because he has to be a leader of men. It's so many different attributes and what we look for. Uh, Physical, I mean offensive lineman. Defensive lineman is totally opposite. What do you mean? Single mama. (laughs) 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 Trying to get it. (laughs) Uh, He's on free lunch. First off, name one thing Deion Sanders just said that was not the truth. Obviously, the standard is going to be different when you're looking for a quarterback. When it comes to the defensive line, who cares about his character? As long as he's big, athletic, and strong, that's all that matters. If the defensive lineman gets arrested for getting into a bar fight, no one cares. Your quarterback gets arrested for bar fighting and impacts the entire team. Headline at USA Today. Deion Sanders' belief about single-parent families is absurd and hypocritical. 
Imagine my surprise when I see the birthing person who wrote this column was none other than the Star Trek virgin himself, Mike Freeman. I am Mike Freeman. Please join me on my Death Star as I pleasure my inflatable Captain Kirk. Mike Freeman. Mike Freeman, Mike Freeman claims Deion Sanders is a hypocrite because he's been divorced twice. This is another case of the media twisting someone's words to fit their own narrative. Deion Sanders did not say he wanted quarterbacks from a two-parent home. He said he wanted quarterbacks with both a mother and father involved. I don't think I need to sit here and explain the differences between a kid raised by both parents and a kid from a single parent home. Headline over at Deadspin, Deion Sanders recruiting philosophy perpetuates racist stereotypes. How? How? What the hell did he say that played on racial stereotypes? I didn't hear Deion Sanders mention race once. Imagine my surprise again when I find out this garbage at Deadspin was written by Karen Phillips. Ooh, KK. One of the leaders in the media in capitalizing off mythical racism. And much like his brother in woke Brian Stelter, KK also leads the line at Dunkin' Donuts. Karen Phillips claimed this truth spoken by Deion Sanders is what causes schools to not recruit black quarterbacks. Um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm almost positive there are more black quarterbacks today than any other point in my lifetime. Deadspin chastised Deion Sanders for having the audacity to speak this truth during Super Butt Bongo Week. This was a direct violation of the woke commandments. You see, there were two black quarterbacks playing in the Super Bowl. During that entire week, the expectation was is that you were not allowed to say anything negative about black quarterbacks. Now, of course, this revision to the woke commandments was extended indefinitely. According to the shit fucks, you are not allowed to speak negatively about black men. The only time this is allowed is that that black man hasn't been baptized and born again and refuses to abide by the woke faith. Case in point... Deadspin, and the rest of the mainstream media attacking Deion Sanders, a black head coach in a sport that is supposedly biased against black head coaches. But Karen brought up an interesting point. Yes, there were two black quarterbacks in the Super Bowl. It got me to wondering, what is their family dynamic like? Patrick Mahomes' parents divorced when he was six years old, but they still raised their children together. Both parents were united. Even though they were no longer involved romantically, they were still friends. They were both involved in their kids' lives. Patrick Mahomes' father was heavily involved in raising him. And I'll be damned, look at what happened! He raised a high-character son that grew into a respectable and successful young man. Well, KC, what about Jackie Mahomes? You know, even the best parents have a bad seed. But look at the bright side here. Pat Mahomes raised a great son, and now he has the daughter he never had. What about Jalen Hurts? I'm sure you'll be surprised to find out his parents are still married. Jalen Hurts was raised in a two-parent home. His father heavily involved growing up, coaching him all the way through the high school level. Cam Newton played in the Super Bowl. Cam Newton also came from a two-parent home with a father heavily involved. Russell Wilson, two-parent home. You see where I'm going here? Are you starting to understand why Deion Sanders looks for influential and involved fathers when he's recruiting a quarterback? Has nothing to do with race and everything to do with logic. You know what Michael Vick had in common with his father? A criminal record. Now this insight into the process of filling positions, it was not the only thing Deion Sanders said that triggered the sensitive shit fucks. At one point during this interview with Rich Eisen, he talked about what it was like living in Boulder, Colorado. Deion Sanders, he appears to be having the time of his life in his new city. Watch for yourself. 30 there is hoodie weather. It's not cold. It's not like 30 in Texas or 30 in Dallas or 30 in, I'm sorry, Florida. So you can handle this cold. Oh, my God. I love it. 
I've adjusted my skin, my skin, my body, everything is adjusted already. Already. Virtually no crime. It was four weeks before I saw police. I stopped him. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I just wanted to introduce myself. <laughs> Say hello. See how things are going. What's going on? How you doing? Popping around here. Now, what did you see there? I mean, for us normal people, this was simply a man living his best life. This was a man happy to be living in Colorado. But you can't look at that clip through the eyes of a normal person. For us to truly understand how this could be triggering for a shit fuck, we got to remove the Under Armour hat and put on our woke hat. All right, now we can think like a Karen. It is hard to ignore what Deion Sanders insinuated about Jackson State. He's turned his back on HBCUs and the black community. This was another racist stereotype. He's saying both crime and the weather are better in white Colorado than in black Jackson, Mississippi. How? Fucking stupid can you be? Last I checked, the weather does not give a shit about race. Are winters bitterly cold in Detroit because Mother Nature is trying to move minorities to the South? I live in the South. The summers down here suck. It's absolutely miserable. But let's think about this logically for a second. Why would Deion Sanders be happier in Boulder, Colorado than he was in Jackson, Mississippi? Hmm. Well, it ain't that hard to figure out. Jackson, Mississippi is a shithole. It's a third world country. One of my best friends, born and raised in Jackson, Mississippi. There's a reason he no longer lives there. You'll be driving down the street and your car suddenly disappears into a pothole the size of the Grand Canyon. His dad got so fed up with it one day, he decided to fix the potholes himself. What'd the city do? They fined him for doing so. They said it was their job, which, of course, they never took care of. The house he grew up in was on a golf course, five-bedroom, three-bath, two-story home. It was located in what used to be an upscale, nice neighborhood. The neighborhood and state that I'm living in, this house would easily go for half a million dollars. In Jackson, Mississippi, he had to beg someone to buy it for $150,000. Why? Because the crime is so bad in Jackson, no one wants to live there. The last time my friend was in Jackson, he got pulled over by the police. Now, this is a true story. They didn't stop him for a traffic violation. They stopped him because he was white and they were concerned about him being there in the middle of the day. They told him it ain't safe to be here. Deion Sanders has complained that he was screwed over by Jackson State. They owe him thousands of dollars, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars in unpaid royalties from ticket sales. Now, you got to remember, Deion Sanders did not need Jackson State. This dude was already a legend. He went to Jackson State to give back to the black community. Yes, he got much needed coaching experience, but this is Deion Sanders. You think he couldn't have got that same head coaching experience at a low-level D1 school that's predominantly white? He chose Jackson State to give back to the black community. How did they treat him? How did they repay him? They fucked him over. So what does he decide to do? He moves to Boulder, Colorado, a city that's 88% white and less than 1% black. I would imagine that number was 0% before Deion Sanders moved there. This dude's probably the only black dude in Boulder, and he's enjoying every minute of it. And who can blame him? This has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with how Deion Sanders was treated. Colorado rolled out the red carpet. They are treating this dude like a king. Why in the fuck would he go back to the ghetto? Just so he can appease shit fucks like Karen Phillips at Deadspin and the rest of the wanker spankers in the mainstream media? Deion Sanders already tried that. It didn't work. But give me your thoughts. The Star Trek virgin and Karen Phillips blast Deion Sanders for speaking the truth. Do you disagree with his process? I think he's absolutely right. I think every winning coach in college football does the same thing. But you let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.